Hey everyone and welcome back to another video today. It is the first of my patch 7.2 content guides. I'll be going over how you can gear up your character in this patch, be it a fresh alt or maybe just using your main for 7.1.5. Do bear in mind that the Tomb of Sagaris raid instance has not released yet, so it is worth benchmarking yourself against Nighthold uh, gear levels. Now, I just launched Warcraft Tales, which is a narrative overhaul to the game's 1 through 60 content that's episodic. If you're interested in more information, the video in the description will cover that. I'll also say a few words about it after the main video because this is the first video I've done since it's actually uh, been announced. Okay, let's talk about gear. So first we'll go over some of the more conventional ways to do things and then we'll move on to the new content of the Broken Shore. Patch 7.2 is bringing a game-wide update to how gear works. It's updating quite a lot of systems, so there's actually a lot to cover. We're going to begin with dungeon content. Dungeon content has seen a massive increase to its item level, but it's also seen an increase to the health and the damage of the mobs contained within the dungeons. This system essentially exists as it does today, but it has been scaled up to match the content of patch 7.2 and the upcoming Tomb of Sagaris raid. So, normal dungeons drop gear at a base item level of 825, heroics drop at a base item level of 845, and then mythic dungeons will drop at a base item level of 865. Mythic Plus operates pretty much as it did, but in line with uh, the system as described, as far as the overall scaling goes. This means the chain running Mythic Plus dungeons continues to be an excellent way to get gear, but heroic and regular Mythic dungeons are actually very lucrative, especially when you bear in mind that LFR content drops a max of 865 from Nighthold, and the Tomb of Sagara's Raid won't be out for a while. This essentially cuts LFR out of gearing, apart from doing Nighthold to get any important trinkets and some set gear. So Mythic Plus should be a far more uh, smoother experience now because they've also uh, made it so that the AP rewards are scaled to dungeon length, which should make, in theory, all of your keystones equally desirable. So that's the dungeon situation. Next, world content. World content can now reward up to a base item level of 865, which is a 20 eye level bump from what it currently is, uh, just like with the dungeon content. Now the base Base item level is dependent on your own character's item level, so if you're 815, maybe your world quest rewards are going to be dropping like 825 or 830, but if your character's 850 on average, then it'll be closer to 865 from the world quests. This means that you want to throw on any crafted gear, any order hall set gear, any of that stuff before you head out into the world to um, do world quests because the higher average item level of your character will cause that world quest gear to uh, drop at a higher item level because of how the scaling works. Okay, next we've got crafted gear. This has actually been significantly changed. It will now be crafted at item level 835 and then can be increased all the way up to 875 using obliterum in increments of uh, five item levels. Any existing crafting uh, crafted gear that is below item level 830 will be upgraded to 840 the first time you use an obliterum uh, on them. So while this is expensive uh, and there is a Blood of Sagaris requirement, this could be an extremely fast way of gearing a character up, a new alt, or even just patching up a few holes in your gear set. Okay, patch 7.2 systems, time to cover them. So, uh, the Broken Shore has a few different mechanics that are similar to some past content, like Tanan Jungle and uh, the Timeless Isle. There are two tiers of gear tokens, and each one of these has a slightly different purpose. The first token is the Dauntless token. These cost 400 nether shards each, more on the nether shard systems in a little bit. These contain a bit of gear that is based on the token that you get, so if you get the, you know, the neck token, you'll get a, a bit of gear for your neck, and they've got a base item level of 850. They can, of course, Warforge and Titanforge, just like all other Legion gear. Above that, we've got Relinquished gear. These are 5,000 nether shards. They are kind of a similar idea to the Dauntless tokens, but they're epic, so they're a guaranteed high item level, and they have a chance to be a raid, dungeon, or PvP item, and they can contain a legendary item. However, it doesn't seem like it's the particularly intended way to to get legendaries. The basic idea here though is that once you're geared up decently, you graduate from using Dauntless tokens to using Relinquished ones. So the Dauntless tokens are also dropped by mobs on the Broken Shore at random, so I've actually found those to be quite common drops and you'll be doing a lot of farming anyway. Nether Shards come from killing mobs on the island, including via the Sentinax portal system and from doing Legion invasions, which will occur in Stormheim, Valshara, High Mountain and Asuna. Just look for the icon on your map. I believe they only start spawning two weeks after the patch drops though. Now the Broken Shore also has new world bosses. There's three of them, they drop gear, which is a base item level of 890, so it's definitely worth saving up your bonus 
roll tokens for them. And then finally, at the end of the Legion Invasion, you'll get 860 plus gear and a whole bunch of nether shards, so it was totally worth doing. It's worth quickly covering order hulls, so the order hull set can be upgraded to 875 via a new upgrade kit. This could be quite handy for some characters, less handy for other ones. Uh, while on that topic, be sure to keep your order hull uh, champions well leveled up. Uh, getting access to the new and existing raid missions from the order hall mission board is a pretty great way of getting dependable raid quality loot on a weekly basis even if you just get the raid mission and then you know clear the boss on lfr next we need to cover pvp gear it's been overhauled it can also be used in the obliterum forge to get a new currency called echoes of domination for the elite pvp gear or echoes of battle for the normal pvp gear you can spend this currency on a slot specific pvp gear token that can also of course Warforge. Uh, then finally, your weekly um, rated PvP quest can also be bonus rolled. They've also added crafted legendaries into the game. These can be bought or sold on the auction house, and they're designed to be a kind of more fun utility legendary for the open world content. Definitely not something that's best in slot. They might be worth getting if you really want to fill a slot, but remember that your first two legendary drops are heavily covered by bad luck protection, and they've also had their drop rates increased. There's also been the rebalanced legendary items, which should make most of the ones you already have a bit more desirable, or at least the ones which are really boring right now might be a little bit more exciting or just have more throughput due to increased stats. So taking all of this into consideration, what do I actually recommend that you do to gear up your characters? Well, if you're on a fresh character, it's really much the same, but just a hell of a lot faster than it used to be. If you can afford the crafted gear, even without the obliterum upgrades, that's a really quick way to boost up the average item level of your character so that you can benefit from great world quest rewards. You'll definitely want to do that if you can afford it, um, but otherwise really, you know, starting off is very similar to how it's been for most of the Legion. Just do your world quests and your normal dungeons and stuff like that until you can get into heroic dungeons, then do some of the Broken Shore uh, content, especially any of the Legion invasions that you see as they will give you plenty of nether shards and some 860 plus gear. Uh, grinding out the nether shards via the Sentinax Beacon Farm is a good way to get quite a few um, Dauntless Tokens actually actually, but also enough nether shards to fill out any outstanding slots uh, in your gear. So if you've had bad luck running those heroic dungeons, you'll be able to fill them in with those dauntless tokens. Uh, this mix of heroic dungeons and dauntless tokens seems like a very quick way to initially get yourself up to like, you know, your 850s and your 860s. Of course, by the time you're 850 or 860, that should be enough to get the world quest to, to uh, start spawning in gear that's 865. So once all that's ready, go collect all your world quest rewards. Now, of course, you always want to do your emissary caches. Um, I just, you know, ensure that you uh, don't let any of them expire. But if you can complete a cache, uh, when you're at a higher item level, that will mean that any gear that could be inside that emissary cache will be scaling off your character's current uh, item level, which, of course, if it's higher, that means that will be better gear, so it's worth just prioritizing the order in which you do content. Now, past that, just do your normal uh, Broken Isles world bosses and the new Broken Shore world bosses that have came in this patch. Again, bonus roll the... Uh, um, yeah, bonus roll them. That'll get you some 890 gear if you're particularly lucky. And really, all of that content that I just mentioned up there, that's low pressure stuff that anyone can do. Um, it will be enough to prepare you for Mythic Dungeons and Mythic Plus Dungeons. Doing these earlier, or as early as you can with a group of friends, would be ideal for gearing up really quickly. But to kind of get into pugs, you'll probably need like 855, 860, maybe a little bit higher for Mythic Plus. Uh, once again, doing Tomb of Sigaris LFR will make a lot of sense once that comes out, just like it did with the Nighthold. But it seems like we're actually looking maybe at mid-June for when that raid will come out. Now, this covers most of the gearing process in patch 7.2. There's quite a lot of randomness involved, but with a combination of just your regular random loot drops and then the things that you can control like crafted gear, dauntless tokens and world quests, you should be able able to get your characters up to speed pretty damn quick. And that's really it for the gearing portion of this video, but before I go a few words on Warcraft Tales, I've been completely flabbergasted by the response that the uh, project's announcement has got. We're over halfway to our first goal, which is the goal that secures the future of the project past um, the three episodes that I'm funding. Uh, we're launching on the 6th of April for episode one, which is Elwyn Forest. It's it's going to be pretty busy uh, up until then, but once the dust has settled, we'll be properly working on featurettes, behind the scenes content, stuff like that, um, and then a whole bunch of stuff for the Patreon crew, um, you know, to thank those guys for all the support that they've given the project. Now, I'm still working on getting through all of the DMs and the mails and the tweets that I've received. That might take a few days uh, because I'm the one handling that stuff, and it's also the final push for the Elwyn Forest QA 
and it's the patch 7.2 guide sort of period of time, so it's been a little bit busy. But that's it for this video. A uh, quick way to get you all geared up and ready for the situations of patch 7.2. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.